All right. So good luck. You you got the the talk that uh, was kept secret until recently. Uh, Adriana is one of the brave people from Cape Town who's braving Joburg for a shower. <laughs> um, she she has this love for analog things, and uh, it seems to be what this talk pertains to as well. So. Hello, my name is Adriana. Welcome to my surprise talk, almost as much a surprise to me as it is to you. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, writing custom metadata plugins for Calibre and how I use that to catalog an old paper library. So what is Calibre? Um, Calibre is a, it's a cross-platform ebook cataloging program, um, which is written in Python 2 with a whole bunch of future imports. Um, yeah, you can use it to manage a library of ebooks, um, arrange it, tag it, add all kinds of metadata. Um, and you can extend it with various plugins and like users of Calibre who are not necessarily like full time programmers or anything, like hack around and make little plugins and they share them. Um, and if you want to see like what plugins are available, what kinds of plugins there are, um, you can go to the mobile read forums where there is a specific forum where everyone congregates and that's like where they share all their things. Uh, that's a horrible URL, but if you go to the main Calibre homepage, you can follow the links on the Get Involved page and you'll get there. Um, so I'm going to show you what Calibre actually looks like so you can see what I'm talking about. And Calibre looks like this. Um, it's a relatively powerful program um, which you can lay out in various different ways. Um, like you can either show these covers or you can just have like a table um, if you want. You can add uh, various custom, um, custom fields in your metadata. So for example, if you have your own special like, categorization system, you can actually like, put that in and have things the way you want them. Um, so something that I do is I have like a shelf column which I added myself where I categorize things um, according to like, where I would put them if this was a shelf in my house. Um, and most of my books are science fiction and fantasy. Uh, some of these are e-books, um, but a lot of these are just empty metadata records um, for my paper books, because I have a lot of books. I have a lot of books that are in paper from when I was a, a child with only pocket money and I bought a lot of very cheap books and secondhand bookshops, and I have piles and piles and piles of them. And for a long time, I've wanted to like, arrange them in some kind of sensible way in an actual digital database so that I could find out what I have. So when I'm in a shop and I go, do I have this? I really can't remember. I'll be able to check. Um, so for a long time, I kind of looked at various Linux um, applications for doing that kind of thing, for like organizing a library, but nothing really grabbed me. And then recently, I realized I'm already using an application like that, Calibre. Like I can use that to sort all my books in one place. Um, what just happened? That is not supposed to happen. Did I press something wrong? Ah, technical difficulties again. What is happening? Okay, now it's fine. Um, yeah, so that's how I use it. I do actually use it for ebooks, but I also use it for paper books. Um, so my expectation when I came up with this great plan is that I was going to take a barcode scanner, i.e. my phone, and I was going to look at the back of the book where there's a barcode for the ISB, and I was going to click it, and magically all these books would just be entered into my library, and it, I, that would be it. Unfortunately, that's not that simple. First of all, a lot of my books, as I said, are very, very old from before you had ISBNs or when ISBNs were one of many standards that nobody could agree on. Um, also, ISBNs don't unambiguously define a specific edition of a book. Um, you can have an entire range of book editions from the same publisher with completely different covers with the same ISBN. And I'm a pedantic person, and when I put a book in the library, I want it to be the exact book that I have in my library. Um, so Calibre also helpfully smushes together multiple records that it finds for the same ISBN if it downloads stuff from multiple sources, which is clearly not what I want here either. Also, most importantly, Calibre's data sources don't know about the vast majority of my books because by default, Calibre searches for metadata in like big popular online sources like Amazon, other bookshops. There are a couple of like library websites, but they're very limited. And like most of my books, I just can't find there. So what do we need to do about that? Um, so people who have a similar problem, uh, people who, have, who want to catalog books uh, in a foreign language or which are specialized in some other way, write custom metadata plugins which get the metadata from a different place. 
Um, so in practice, this usually means scraping some websites. In the theory, you could like get the data from anywhere, but that's what most of them do. Um, also, we need to be able to enter a different type of identifying information as the original thing to like look things up by, which is more unique. Um, and also, to avoid the smooshing problem, we need to reduce the number of, error of records that we find to ensure that like, j exactly the one that we want is returned. Um, so, for the first part, there is a very cool website called ifsdb.org, which, sorry, isfdb.org, the Internet Science Speculative Fiction Database. Uh, which is a very, very detailed database about science fiction and fantasy books going way back in time to uh, very, very old books, um, all the way up to like, currently published books. Um, and each publication, um, so each specific edition of a book is uniquely identified by a specific ID in their database. Um, and the, it does have an API, but the API is very limited. There's like two searches that you can do, and neither of them is what we want here. So we do need to scrape the page if we want to get the functionality that we want. Um, so how do we write a plugin for Calibre? We carefully read the entire tutorial for writing plugins, and then we sit down and we write this beautiful, efficient piece of code. And I told you that I like science fiction and fantasy, because obviously nobody ever does this. The way that you actually write a plugin is you find another plugin which does kind of what you want, but with the wrong page, and then you find the web scrapey bits and you throw them away and you put in your own bits and you keep hacking it until like it's fine and it seems to work. And it's very likely that the, the author who wrote that plugin did exactly the same thing with another plugin, and that person did the same thing with another plugin. So you sometimes find like pieces of code in the plugin which are completely useless, but they were super important like five plugins ago, and no one's removed them because they're too scared. Um, and every time you find a piece of code like that, you're like, oh, this is such a mess. I have to fix this like properly. I'm a real developer. This, like, why am I doing this? And eventually, maybe once you've actually figured out how th everything works, you will fix it later. I did, in fact, fix it later eventually. Uh, and the important thing is, unfortunately, that when you write any kind of tool that relies on web scraping somebody else's website, every time you use it, you will discover that in your absence, they changed the website, and now everything is broken, and you have to go and fix it. Usually, it's just a little tiny thing that's broken, but expect to have to maintain this. Um, so now I'm going to show you what the actual code looks like. And so you're going to find some plugins that are just one file, where everything is just in one file, depending on how like, complicated or not complicated they are. This is My plugin is in two files. This is the main file, which has all the bits that actually plug into Calibre. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but to summarize this, uh, plugins like this do a search using one URL that you pass parameters to, and then they use that whatever is returned from that search to get a bunch of other URLs where your records are going to be, and then it goes and like looks at those pages and extracts certain kinds of information which it returns to you so that um, normally you would like look at several records and pick the one that like most closely matches what you want. Um, this plugin can do that, but it can also be operated in a mode where you're going to give it a very specific criterion, and it's going to essentially fetch you one record if it can find it, which it should. Um, but yeah, the, there's like a whole bunch of common, commonly used code which you're going to find in a lot of plugins if you look at existing ones, where there are like worker threads sent off to fetch like different bits and pieces, and then in the end, it'll get put in some kind of like list for, for the user to look at. Um, and I've extracted out all of the stuff that actually parses the website into a separate file um, so that there's some degree of separation between the bits that are specific to this website and the bits that are just generic, and so that it's easier to find like where you need to fix things. Um, and th this is an open source thing, and it's available online, so if you want to look at it in greater detail, I'll give you a link right at the end. Um, yeah, so basically it is um, any number of Python files, and yeah, there's a, in order to install this, um, in Calibre, you would navigate to the directory, and then there's a command, uh, Calibre Customize minus B um, dot, which means Calibre Customize build a plugin, which I find in this directory, and that'll just add it to Calibre. So you, can, you don't have to restart Calibre, you can keep it running, and it'll just update whatever is there. Um, okay, so... Is it doing that? It was fine before. Oh, wait, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, so, how do we glue this all together? Um, so, when I'm, if you're just doing one book, then it's easy enough to go into Calibre, create an empty record, put in the thing, and push the button, and you're done. But when I'm digitizing my library, I take a big stack of books, 
and I want to enter all of them, and I don't want to click the button a million times because that's frustrating. Um, so what I do is um, I use a really horrible Python script uh, to parse Firefox's session database for the currently running session to find all of the open tabs from ISFDB, which are like publication pages, and to, like fetch the IDs from there and like return them. And then to add them all at once to Calibre, you can actually run Calibre non-interactively with a Calibre DB command um, to interact with the database. Um, so I can pipe those IDs into another script that I have, which used to be a horrible shell script, but because this is a Python conference, earlier today I rewrote it into an equally horrible Python script. Um, so this script takes all of those IDs, adds them to Calibre, um, and sets some custom metadata, which I set on all of my science fiction books to say that they're going on this shelf and also say that I've read them because if I'm putting them in there, then it means I've read them. Otherwise, I would never find them again. Um, and how to finally, how to download the metadata. Um, in Calibre, you need to disable all of the other sources so that you don't end up getting other sources which might have the same ISBN and like overwriting the information with each other. Um, so now I will show you my horrible scripts and do a live demo, which will definitely work, because what could possibly go wrong? Um, so the scripts are here. Uh, these are not currently in the repo, because they're very uh, not generic. They have like hard-coded uh, paths to where my uh, Firefox um, folder is. This is in no way like uh, public ready. But essentially, this is a thing which finds the file in Firefox and then does a whole bunch of magic to find all the open tabs and searches them and then gets a bunch of things. Um, and then the script for adding just, yeah, this just executes um, Calibre and like it's a bunch of custom tabs. And the way that this works, so I'll show you what I've done. So in my, the, the, most, the, the most time consuming and manual part of this process is something that I can't really automate, which is actually browsing the website to actually find the book which matches the book that I have, which is sometimes a bit challenging. Um, but usually I find something which is either the exact book or close enough for government work, same cover, looks fine. Um, so I found here three example books. One of them I actually do want to put in my database, and these are duplicates of books that I already have, just like different editions. Um, so as you can see, this is a publication page. It says it's publication. Here's the publication record ID, and this is the thing that we're going to add to Calibre um, as the initial thing it's going to use to like look this data up. Um, so I have three books there, and if I go to... Oh, maybe this is the right place. Um, so I can run my script. Uh, this is my script which finds the IDs and returns those three, those three IDs, and then I can... Ah, so I need to close Calibre before I do this because Calibre gets very upset if you try to modify the database while the program is running. It doesn't like that. Um, so having closed it, I'm going to pipe that to my new Python script which should run, and it should tell me that it's setting a bunch of random metadata and it's adding these books, and okay. And now, if we open Calibre again, we should see that it has added three empty records. Yeah, so here we have three empty records, um, and if I look at one of them, I can see that everything is blank, nothing's been filled in, except for over here, the ISFDB ID. And if this is filled in, then no matter what else is filled in, the plugin is going to prioritize looking up that specific record. Um, otherwise, you can use the plugin as a normal uh, metadata plugin and just enter like a title and author, and then it'll do like a normal search. Um, but here, um, we've set this up so that we can, um, we can look up specific records. So if I select these three, I can download metadata and covers. And here, I have configured the the downloads that only ISFDB is selected in all the sources. And okay, the moment of truth. And now I'm going to tell it to download the metadata. And it takes like a while, but I think the internet is still working. Okay, so now it's told me that it's found it, and now I can review the metadata to make sure that it's all correct. And if I review it, I can see that this is all filled in for the first one, and it's the cover that I was expecting, and the next one is also correct.
correct and the next one is also correct so if I click next it'll apply that metadata and fill those books in and now if I go and look at one of them I can see that all the metadata has been filled in now the title and the author and like all this other stuff and basically everything that's extractable from that web page I've um, put in here um, so that is how it works so There was a delay last time, but it did work. This is very weird. What is happening? Okay, I'm just, oh wait, 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 now it's fine. Okay, so future work, uh, merging contributor code. I actually have a contributor, one contributor, who contacted me towards the end of last year because he wants to use this to catalog short stories that he downloads off the internet. So what he wants um, is instead of using metadata from a publication page, he wants to use metadata from the title page, which is kind of like the, the abstract thing which can have multiple publications because the short story um, doesn't necessarily have like a, publication just by itself and he just wants to use like the the more generic information so he submitted like a, a, um, a PR but I couldn't merge it in straightforwardly because it needs some changes to be integrated back and that was a year ago and I haven't touched it since um, but maybe in these sprints that's a that's a good thing to do um, also my glue code is not really something that I can give to non-technical people and go hey here are some horrible scripts go and do this thing um, so I want to um, do this a bit better. I want to s look at integrating it into the Calibre <coughs> UI um, or into the web browser or both so that there's some kind of user-friendly way of either clicking in the browser on some kind of like thing saying put this in Calibre or in Calibre a button that says get all my books from Firefox or something like that. Um, yeah, but I have not investigated that uh, uh, with any level of detail. Um, okay, and that is the end of my talk. Um, this is where you can find the code, and this is where you can find me, and that is it. And do you have any questions? Uh, oh, close. Um, you mentioned uh, sort of when you're in a shop looking up whether you have a book or not. Does Calibre have a sort of mobile app or web page or some way to see it on a cell uh, phone? So or? That's a complicated, slightly complicated because sort of it does. Um, you can have so yes, there is a, you can integrate Calibre with uh, all kinds of mobile devices. That's like part of its like core functionality because you can use it to like send books in various places. So there's an Android there's an Android app called Calibre Companion, which essentially is like a bridge between Calibre and whatever book reader you're using, which can be anything. Um, and essentially Calibre like manages, you can use it to connect to your Calibre library and like get new books and do stuff like that. And then your, your reader will find like where you've put them. Uh, the tricky thing right now is that um, Calibre Companion doesn't store a record of like your entire library if those books aren't on your mobile device. So obviously I don't want to walk around with like a giant pile of like, f well particularly like comic books, which are huge. So that'd be ridiculous. Um, so currently I don't have a solution yet for just like actually like caching the information. So people do like ha have this workaround where they create uh, like empty formats for the, for the paper books where they just create text files that are like empty or have like the title inside them or something. So they can download those onto their phone because they take up like very little space and then they have like all their paper books. But that sounds very silly and also like it doesn't solve the problem for ebooks. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that if, if there isn't already a tool that lets you export like the Calibre library as just like a list of books, it should be relatively easy to write one. So that's also filed under future work. Once like, the whole thing actually is digitized, like what do I do with it? Um, yeah, so sort of maybe, and if it, there isn't a tool yet, it should be possible to make one. Any other questions? Not one. You've provided a website which has lots of extra detail on science fiction and fantasy books. Yes. But is there something similar for other genres? 
maybe Thank you. you should ask enthusiasts of those other genres. Struck by my laptop for a second. Apologies if this got explained already, but um, when you're scraping Firefox, is there are you using any sort of API Python library for this, or are you just oh, sort of Firefox. reaching into the, uh, the internals? No, basically, uh, I've discovered that there is a file in the profile directory where Firefox keeps the current actually running session, and I decompress that using one Python library because that's a new addition. It used to just be a JSON file, but now it's, it's, it's compressed. And then I like read the JSON file, and then I browse the JSON file to find like a bunch of entries, and then I use regex to find the ones that are from this website, and then I get them. So it's, it's really horrible. I wish there were an API. That would be great, but no, so I don't think so. Are you using regex to parse HTML? No, no, there's no HTML in here. Okay. I'm using, H I'm using regex to parse URLs. Okay. It's totally different, completely fine. Anyone else? Okay, thank you for coming, and we should have tea now. Just uh, before you run away, uh, OfficeZen has left some cards here if you want to enter into their competition so that we don't uh, create another uh, problem outside. Uh, please help yourselves to them, and then the tea break is going to start in 15 minutes or so. So we can chill for 15 minutes? Yes, we can. Uh, the schedule has been moved on by 10 minutes as well. So. Thank you, Adriana. <laughs>